Uh, shave me. Shave sir? Lovely day, sir. Quite nice. Quite nice. So good. Quite comfortable, sir? Quite, quite. Getting a bit thin on the top, sir? Ah. We make up this plummet on the premises, sir. Have done for a hundred years. Just a few drops. No, thanks. Me. Skin looks very tender, sir. Ah. Ah, there's only one brand of safety razor blade. Shake them. Certainly, sir. I suppose you want to sell that, too. That is one thing I will never sell. Not to me, you won't. This is no joking matter, sir. That man was the greatest exponent of the razor the world has ever known. He was a true artist. And it was on this very spot over a hundred years ago that he proved it to the world. It was the strangest story ever told in the days of sailing ships, the Pool of London, narrow streets, dark alleys. All aboard, sir. All right, Fanny, give him a hand, Stein. You mean aboard the ship, sir? Well, of course, why not? Oh. Hadn't I better stay here with you, sir? Oh, it's wonderful seeing you again. I was afraid that last night's goodbye was... Oh, I couldn't let you go without another word. Your father, does he know you're here? Heaven forbid. What have you done to put him so against you, Mark? Well, it's what I haven't done. It's because I'm poor, because my parents are poor. Because I'm just making one of his own ships. Why, he despises me. Hello, Stanley. Hello, Nan. You know, I had a fortune told yesterday. Buckles for gazer. Did you now? Oh, what did you see? Your face. Oh, uh, perhaps it was something that had got into the glass. Ah, Mr. Todd. Come to bid farewell to the Golden Oak? Yes, sir. There's scarcely a man jack of that crew I haven't had in my barber's chair. Brown beards, black beards, red beards. I polished them all up. Ah, but it's when they return from their journeyings that they need you more. Yes. I make them spit and stand to meet their sweethearts. Lovely lot of throats, the lot of them. Beautiful throats, rich and mellow to a razor. You're an artist, you are, Mr. Todd. I love my work. Here's a list of things I want you to bring me back. One parrot, five pounds of tea, thirty yards of red Japanese silk. Well, here, where do I put all these things during the voyage? Oh, in your bunk. Then how can I sleep? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I won't know that till I'm married to you. Well, there seems to be plenty of money in the barber's business. We'll have to see you anyway, Mr. Todd. Good day. Money. Money. If only I had money. What about the money to pay for all these things? Now, if I were a fine gentleman, it's money that makes the gentleman. Father! Lummy, the governor. I'm off. Oh, give us a kiss before you go. I'll add it to the list. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing here? I asked Joanna here to say goodbye. Father, I came here because I... Quiet, girl. Get aboard your ship, sir. You know my answer to you. But I love Joanna. How dare you argue with me? Get aboard, I say. Or I'll have you thrown there. Please go, Mark. Goodbye, Joanna. I'll have something to say to you when I get home tonight. Oh, no. Stop sniveling and get in. All right. You see, Mr. Oakley, 
I was right. You were, Todd. How did you know she would be coming here? I guess, Mr. Oakley. It's a shame that a fine girl like your daughter should throw herself away. You will not throw herself away, Mr. Todd. I'm very indebted to you. Mr. Oakley, when would it be convenient to discuss again the matter we broached the other day? Ah, yes, about your taking up a share in the new ship. To the tune of, shall we say, 15,000 pounds? 15,000 pounds? Maybe I can find a little more. Well, 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 and all the mess from beers and whiskers. The fruits of my razor. So many I polished off. Uh, Mr. Todd, are you dining anywhere tonight? At home, sir. Only at home. Will you try a cut of mutton and boiled fowl with me? Mr. Oakley, you are too kind. Fiddlesticks. I shall be glad of your company. Tonight, then. There, there, Miss Joanna. Now the months will fly past and I'll soon be there. I hope so. Well, there's, there's nothing to cry about. Oh. Ah, Mr. Beadle, so you've brought me another apprentice. And a nice little boy, too. The city master says this is the last boy he's going to send you. You've had seven, and they've all disappeared. Boys will be born. But you get a guinea from the parish funds for each boy. Seven guineas in seven weeks. And this is the eighth. And the last. Make your sons at home. Now to business. What's your name, my little man? Tobias Ray. Orphan found on the steps of St. Dunstan. Now, before you are bound in apprenticeship, the city master wishes to know if it is of your own free will. We both bear witness that the lad is willing. And count yourself a very lucky little boy. The city master has ordered me to keep a special eye on him. Isn't he a lucky little boy? A special eye from the good beetle, and a penny a day from me. <laughs> now, if you're signed here, Mr. Todd, this guinea is yours. I'm obliged to you, Beetle. Well, good day, Tobias. <laughs> good day, Mr. Todd. Good day, worthy Beetle. Oh, I should like to polish him off. Come here. Afraid of me, Tobias? No, no, not really, sir. Take care, you don't give me cause to make you afraid of me. I'll, I'll try to do my best, sir. That's a good boy. The first duty of a barber's boy is to keep a still tongue in his head. Yes. I knew a nice little barber's boy once. Why, his tongue cut out for letting it wag too much. I, I won't talk, sir. No. And if any of my customers should give you a penny, what would you do with it, Tobias? I, I don't know, sir. You'll give all the pennies to me and I'll keep them for you. Till you become a rich, rich man. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Tobias? Yes, sir. What would you buy if you were a rich, rich man? One of those pies that look so good in the shop next door. Oh, well. Here's a penny. Go and buy yourself a pie. And pretend you are a rich, rich man. Penny. What a nice new penny. Where did you get it? Mr. Todd, my master. 
So you are Mr. Todd's new apprentice? Yes, How old are you, my dear? Just 12 minutes. We start. You shall have a special big start. Thank you, ma'am. this visit? I was anxious. I hadn't seen you all day. No, I've been busy. Busy at the quayside. No shipper's berth today. The Golden Hope was just sailed. Oh, Stephen Oakley's ship. Why the interest? I may be joining him in partnership. Quite sightly going up in the world. Well, it's better than going down. Many that go up come down quickly enough from the gallows. By that I suppose you mean... I could hang you, Sweeney, with one word, like that. And I could hang you, my precious, without that. If we must hang together, better alive than dead. <laughs> Why all the care? I'm dining with Mr. Oakley tonight. And wish to give his women folk at least. Then you are jealous. Only for what you do with your money, our money. The money I have helped you to get, and I not have that squandered on earth. What are you doing here? Spying? No, sir. But I thought as I'd finish my... Why do you stare at me? Please, ma'am. I left you in your shop and I was wondering how you... Come here, Tobias. There was once an apprentice to a barber whose eyes were too big, whose tongue was too long, who saw too much, and spoke of what he saw. So his master took his sharpest razor and stropped it well. No, 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 no. I promise I won't say a word. Not even to the beetle. I shouldn't like you to be a little boy like that, Tobias. Sure, I look surprised. I hope I look surprised. Why should I dress up for Mrs. Todd? Oh, Miss Joanna. You look more lovely than ever. Such flattery, man. For shame on you. Well, look for yourself. You'd win the heart of any girl. No one could help losing their heart to you, Miss. I suppose Father has some business deal with Mr. Todd, and I've got to be treatment. Mr. Todd. Honey bug a pig, that's what he is. A pig, Miss Joanne. I brought the figures right up to date. Why has the cost of building this ship gone so high? Forgive me, sir, but I've always thought of it a little ambitious. Ambitious? Of course there's ambition. Is it a crime to own the finest ship afloat? I tell you, Savage, I'll finish that ship if it costs me every penny I have. Now, why not be a little nice to Mr. Todd? Just yes, please your father. Perhaps make him think a little more kindly of Mr. Mark, for your sake. The contractors are demanding an immediate further advance of 5,000 pounds. And I'm afraid, sir, that's not possible. You haven't got it. Mr. Todd, sir. Mr. Todd, I'm delighted to see you. I'm afraid I was still hard at work. This is Mr. Savage, my secretary, who has just come from the shipyard. What a wonder that new ship of mine will be, Mr. Todd. A uh, glass of sherry, sir. Light or dark? Dark, if I may be so bold. And you've chosen right. Your health, sir. Ah, Joanna, you've met Mr. Todd before, haven't you? You are looking more lovely than ever tonight, Miss Joanna. You're very kind, sir. She takes after me in looks and her mother in willfulness. 
Dinner is served, sir. Will you take my daughter in, Mr. Todd? Delighted. to make you comfortable, Mr. Fenlis. And you've succeeded, Captain. A devilish quick boy, sir. Three months from Bombay to London. Remarkable! Remarkable! Yes, sir. These fast clippers of ours make the world seem smaller every day. Yes, it's grand to be home again. Oh, uh, may I ask you to distribute this amongst the crew? A little appreciation. You're very generous, sir. Yes, I can afford to be. <laughs> no need for me to work again. Well, good day, Captain, and thanks again. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Welcome to England, sir. Thank you, thank you. As a voyage, I hope. Use it, please. Permit me to present my car. Mr. Sweeney Todd, father of Fleet Street. At your service, sir. After months at sea, what could be more pleasant than a haircut, shave, shampoo, and a general polish? Begad, I believe you're right. Is your shop nearby? But round the corner, sir. Then begad, Mr. Sweeney Todd, you shall polish me off, as you put it. Here, take my trap to the Polly Horse Hotel, Charing Cross. I'll follow in half an hour. Now, Mr. Todd, I'm at your service. No, sir. I'm at your service. What a nuisance that is. You've been a bad way without it. And so, Mr. Sweeney Todd, I said. How I dread that carriage driver in this afternoon. I have a mind to say I know. So you can't do that, Miss. Now, um, think of it warm enough. I have one, two, three petticoats. Oh, you should never take the air in less than five. <laughs> Now, um, oh, you've neglected to put on your red flag. Now, that should go on first, next to pantaloon. Should I wear the chest protector, do you think? Oh, without a doubt, miss. Why, well, you had our bath only yesterday. Some people say a beard is a protection against the cold. Nothing, sir. A beard is an unnecessary offending. Why do we have him? Provide employment for honest worker. <laughs> this is my boy, a charity lad. Come here, Tobias. Just tell the gentleman where you've been. There were no beer. Check in the workhouse, I think. There's your answer, sir. No, 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 sir. Not there, sir. Sit here, sir. My special chair, sir. For gentlemen like you, sir. From abroad, sir. Who desire an extra polishing off. <laughs> hey, Just sir. place your bag beside you, sir. It will be quite safe. There, sir. Been long from England, sir? Twelve years. Your friends and relations will be glad to see you back. I have no relations that I travel about, or who travel about me. And friends? None in this country. All alone in the world, as one might say. Not quite. I've brought plenty of companions with me who'll make me friends wherever I go. I am Golden companion to the head of his majesty, on. Eh? They're the best friends a man can have. <laughs> you are wise to keep them with you, sir. Thanks can't be trusted. Is the soap to your liking? Most delicately perfumed. And the water, hot enough? Perfect. Then we'll see if my razor will suit you. Tobias, go and see the time by the clock at St. Dunstan's. It was five minutes to twelve o'clock, sir. Oh, then you must be hungry, my little man. See, here's a penny for you. Go and ask Mrs. Lovett to give you one of her largest pies. Thank you, sir. And you need not return until you've eaten it all. See if you can make it last you while you walk the Charing Cross and back. Thank you, sir. You've a soft heart, Mr. Todd. Tender as a chicken, sir. It's my one weakness. Now see the welcome Sweeney Todd gives to gentlemen who return from foreign parts. Oh, <laughs> 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 
There, my dear. This one will last you to Whitehall and back. Thank you, ma'am. Good day. Good day, dear. Who is it this time? Nabob from the Indies. Is he, uh... I polished him off. I like them from the Indies. They generally have so much money. Yes, generally. He's a fine figure of a man. You're in luck. I wonder. Well, I've done my part. Now it's your turn. Aren't you going to help me? No, I can't stop now. You can give me my half share later. I, I have to meet another customer. In your best clothes, too. Well, if I don't dress well, how can I attract the best customer? Or the best girl. Rubbish. I don't shave girls. But you shave their father. What are you talking about? Stephen Oakley and his daughter. You think I don't know? Take care, Sweeney. There, there. I'll be back soon, and I'll give you a hand. Don't worry. I'll manage. I beg your pardon? I didn't say anything. You leave me to make all the conversation. I like to be quiet sometimes. Pretty, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Where did it come from? East Indies. It was left to me by a customer. Pearls, rubies and sapphires. Pearls for your teeth. Rubies for your lips, like sapphire for your eyes. Oh, sir, you mustn't. But it's for you. I have your father's permission. But to accept a gift like this from you, you inspire me with a little hope. That's why they call it the Cape of Good Hope. Oh. And now we pass it, I suppose we ain't got no hopes. I have, buddy. Ah, you're different. Your girl will love, honor, and obey you. Well, won't your girl? Well, I suppose we'll both do the loving and I shall do the honor and obey. Yes, Master Patterson? Yes. They've started at last, Snowdrop. Yes, Master? Medicine men tell me a big jar of fire water. Aye, the drunken hound. I thought they'd been quiet all along. You slip away to the water's edge. The big ship should be here any time now. Golden Hope, Master? Aye, the Golden Hope. Get aboard, son. Tell the captain to send help.
Oh, you're a pessimist, Bernie. Yes and no. Yes, because you may be right. And no, because I don't know what it means. and muskets to boat's crew. We're going ashore. Aye, aye, sir. Let me go, sir. Why, well, do you want all the fun, Mr. Ingestry? I shall take the money. Well, I'll come with you, sir. But you have a sweetheart at home. Perhaps she doesn't want to lose you. Well, you've got a wife, sir. Well, perhaps she wouldn't mind losing me. Still, all right. We'll go together. Come on. What they're worth, but they're what I've worked for all these years. They're no use to me now. Will you do me a service in exchange? I want no exchange. Bury me three points north by north northwest. That's where Wolsey lies. What is it? The captain. What you mean is. Two points. No, by no, no. The order, sir? Yes. Get the compass from the boat. Tell the man to dig a grave for two fellow countrymen. Three points north of no, no, west. Ah, sir. Forbid that I should appear an ungrateful man. Weeks and months slip by until I feel a little impatient. But I don't understand, Tom. You're getting the interest on your money, aren't you? I was not thinking so much of the monetary. What do you mean? I mean Joanna is persistent in her lack. You are so much older than she is. Spring and autumn are the same. Those are often the happiest. The golden hope will soon be home and then uh, you can have your money in full. You suggest I await the return of the Golden Hope. 
before I speak to your daughter? My dear fellow, there's nothing to prevent your asking her now. There's much to prevent her accepting you. And there'll be still more to prevent it if the golden hope is here. Then what do you suggest? You pay me the money you owe. But I can't, Todd. You know I can't. Then the new ship becomes my sole trouble. You can't. You wouldn't. Have you read our little agreement? But I wouldn't if you were my father. But I... I can't answer for my daughter. The girl has a will of her own. And you must cultivate some powers of persuasion. She's a good girl, a dutiful daughter. And when she knows her father's future is in her own hands, that will small a cost to her. Can you doubt what her answer will be? Mr. Todd, you place me on the rack. No, sir, it is you who place me on the rack. I am the offended one, sir. But it is up to you now to make a man. Oh, Mr. Todd, I thought you'd gone. Just about to take my leave. Your father and I had so much to talk about, it delayed me. Tomorrow at the latest, I must have your answer. Then I shall know what steps to take. What's the matter, Father? A little worried, my dear, that's all. About the new ship? I'm afraid I've bitten off more than I could chew. What'll happen if you can't complete her? She passes out of my hands into his. What? Yes. And I shall still owe him more than I can pay. What will happen then? I'm afraid all this must go. And you, Father? I expect I shall have to go with it. You mean he can send you to prison? Oh, can't anything be done? Haven't you anything you can realize money on? No, nothing. Congratulations. On what? You look at least two years younger. In fact, you scarcely look a day older than her own father. You've heard of my good fortune, eh? Bad news travels fast. Oh, I should like to polish you off. I know you would. But you then. Golden Hope. What about the Golden Hope? He's coming up the river with the tide. A postboy colonel. It's possible the Isle of Dark not an hour ago. Lisa, you're hurting me. You're a good boy, Tobias. You shall have a penny. <laughs> a little later on. Come ashore with you, sir. Carry bag or something. What are you so anxious to go ashore for? Well, uh, <laughs> well, you seem to forget. The captain's job's finished once he's left his ship. The supercargo's job's only just begun. That's it. But get on with it, man. I'll tell her what an important fellow you are nowadays. <laughs> you pardon me, but isn't it Captain Mark Industry? I'm afraid you overstated, sir. Acting captain. Let's hope your new rank may be confirmed, sir. Not only for your sake. The lady as well. You seem very well informed, sir. There's not much escapes me. Doubtless you know me by name. Sweeney Todd Barbara Fleet Street. Why, of course I know the name, and I'm very pleased to have made your acquaintance. And now if you'll excuse me. On wings of love, if I might use the expression. Well, perhaps you're right. You should look your best, Captain. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. Of course you should. Don't be shy. It won't take a minute. Well, the quicker you are, the better I'll be pleased. No, sir, no. The better I should be. Mark, am I fairly safe and sound? Mark. 
But you don't understand me. Everything's all right. Mr. Mark's been made captain. My plan is still for cargo. And Mr. Mark's a rich man, so he'll be able to get married. Oh, it isn't true. It can't be true. Who told you? It is true. Everybody knows <laughs> about you. You're handy for the key here, Mr. Dodd. I'm handy for most things, Captain. When I'm finished with you, you won't know yourself. <laughs> I hope Miss Oakley will know me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I couldn't have said it better myself. Come inside, sir. Come inside. You will sit there, sir. My chair is waiting for you. Successful voyage, Captain? More than successful. My future is made. You're a lucky man. Successful trading, eh? Know anything about pearls? A little. Have a look at these. They were given me by a dying man. I wish it were my fortune to meet such a man. You may do. You never know your fate. You're quite right, sir. You never know your fate. Fate has made me the happiest man in the world. Nothing can stand in my way now. Oh, no rival or anything? <laughs> Not the least chance of it. Then you are indeed a lucky man. You have a beautiful throat for a razor, sir. Beautiful. You should know, Mr. Todd. I do. Finish, Tobias? Come here, Tobias. Here's a penny. Go and ask Mrs. Lover to give you one of our biggest pies. One that will last you. Walgate pub and back. Thank you. Why do you lock the door? I only attend to one customer at a time, sir. Listen, you are in a hurry. I must give you my whole attention. Lie back, sir. Lie back. I'll soon punish you. What are you doing, spying again? Nothing. This is another shop of Oh, there's the penny I gave you. That's a good boy. And that's what the boys get. You don't know what they're told. Why is your shop closed? I thought you had a customer. Have you seen him? No. You swear that? Of course I swear. Strange. Very strange. Some sailors fall like cats on their feet. Who told you he was a sailor? Your best customers always are, aren't they? He gets away. We are lost. Perhaps he found the secret way. How could he? The catch is loose. Sometimes it opens on its own. Oh. Can you see anything? No. It's as dark as pitch. Give me that candle.
Are you going right through? Yes. Very wise. Nothing like making sure. Well? No sign of it. You set me back on the Golden Hope for now. The Golden Hope? Mark Industry ship. I believe you knew it was here. How could I? Mark Industry? Oh, then you had a double reason to. The sooner you learn to keep your mouth closed, the safer you'll be. <laughs> the course of true love never did run smooth, so they say. I've heard he's returned a very rich man. Maybe. He left here a pauper. I saw to that. Oh. He'll have as much chance with Oakley's daughter now as he had before he sailed. He'll find it best to make himself scarce. And where's my share of what you took from him? Don't worry. You'll get it. <laughs> Ed. Ed. Don't make a sound. He may return at any moment. Lie still where you are, and when it's dark, I'll see that you get away. Me? Listen, Joanna, I left the ship the moment it was there. I couldn't come to you soon enough to tell you of my wonderful fortune and how rich I was. But on the way, I stole a few moments at a barber in Fleet Street. Greeny Todd? Yes, that's the man. Why, do you know him? Yes. But go on. Well, I was sitting in his chair. He knew I was in a hurry because I told him all about you. You told him? Well, of course, darling, why not? Oh, nothing. Well, all of a sudden, the chair tilted and I was flung into blackness. I must have crashed into the cellar below. I never remembered anything more until a woman who I'd never seen before helped me out of an old bin through a hole in the wall of a bakehouse. I stumbled along a passage, and at last I found myself in the porch of St. Dunstan's church. Oh, Mark, that dreadful man. He would have murdered you. I know he would. Yes, but he's robbed me of everything that I had. I'm in no better position now to talk to your father than I was six months ago. My father, too, is in terrible trouble. This same Sweeney Todd can throw him into prison and threatens to do so unless I... Who's there? I thought I heard voices. Are you all right? Yes, Father, I'm all right. Good night, dear. Good night, Father. Oh, dear. Listen, Joanna. I'll get even with this man. I'll have him arrested as a thief and a murderer. But who will believe you? You say you remember nothing. You must have proof of what he did. Yes, I must. But I'll get it. 
There is a way, but I'll need help. Oh, let me. No, no, no. This will be dangerous. Listen, can you get hold of Fanny? A man will know where he is. Well, tell him to meet me at the old warehouse on the quay. I'll be there. Ma, take care. For my sake. I promise you I will. And when we've got this man under lock and key, I'll get those jewels if I have to pull that shop down to do it. Mr. Parson. So you received my note, eh? I did. And what is it this time? Uh, not that I fancy I shall be able to buy. The market in trinkets is very poor. And I have not yet disposed of the last consignment that you uh, received from abroad. Oh, then I'm wasting your time and mine. Oh, my time is of no value. You don't appear to have much on hand yourself. Well, shall we get to business? By all means. And what is it you have to dispose of? <sighs> So, no market for them. The fashion settings have changed. But these are not set. Oh, straight from abroad. I don't inquire from you what you do with the goods you buy from me. Why inquire where I get them? Why, to be sure, that is the basis of our business contract. And uh, may I see these pearls? Certainly. Hey, Aunt Sally, how do I look? You look exactly like an old country farmer. But you still sound like Mr. Mark. Aye, I do and all. Well, we'll soon put a stop to that. That's fine, sir. Come That's on, get your things on. Yes, sir. So beautifully. The sizes graduate so easily. In the open market, they would fetch a handsome price. Oh, that splendid view. Yes, you recollect I said the open market. We are behind closed doors. Certainly. Under the circumstances. What do you suggest? Five thousand? You'll have to do better than that, Mr. Todd. With pleasure, Mr. Todd. Uh, shall we say seven thousand? You are easier this morning, Mr. Todd. No, sir. You are easier. Have you the money on you? The question is, if you have the money on you. Meaning? I consider seven thousand pounds a very small amount for you to pay me to remove the evidence against you. Evidence? What evidence? Certain sea captain, who shall be nameless, arrived at the docks yesterday. He was seen to enter this shop, but never to leave. He had a bag of pearls, Mr. Todd. I'll take the 7,000 in gold, if it's all the same to you. <laughs> you are humorous this morning, Mr. Parson. Now, the fine weather brightens our senses. You mind waiting while I laugh? <laughs> By all means, don't cut it short for me. Won't you take a chair while I have my laugh out? No, <laughs> Mr. Sir, I will stand and laugh with you. I pray you, sir, take a seat. Thank you, sir, to take your hands off me. You see, uh, you have had your laugh out. Now, let us get to business. What do you suggest? I will take the pearls with me and 7,000 golden sovereigns or... Or what? I'll tell all that I know. And what do you know? First, I will tell the landlord of the spotted horse why Mr. Finlay did not arrive to collect his luggage. Secondly, I will tell the city master why you had eight apprentices in eight weeks. And third, I will tell Mr. Stephen Oakley... And what will you tell him? I will tell him what happened to the captain of the Golden Hope... After he left the key. And then... This swingy tub shop? Yes, sir. Do you wish to go in? So do you, I take it. Didn't you want to come in? I won't, yes, sir. But I have to come in. But I don't wish to. Oh, why not? Because I'm afraid, sir. I'm afraid of the whole place. Afraid? Why? I don't know, sir. Sometimes I think that he... What do you think? No, sir, I mustn't say. 
I did Mr. Todd said he would cut my tongue out with one of his razors. Cut your tongue out? What for? Because he thought I was spying on him while he was shaving a sea captain. Sea captain, eh? And were you spying? No, sir, on my honor. He sent me out to buy a pie. He always does after I finish loving his customers. Oh. And when you return, the customers are always gone, eh? Yes, sir. How did you know? And after you finish lathering me, he'll send you out to buy another pie, eh? Yes, I expect so. We'll soon find a fence who doesn't know as much as he did. When anybody knows too much, the better like that. I agree. When he sends you out today, how'd you like never to come back? But what will become of you, sir? Can you read this address? Miss Oakley sends for a payment. Take that to Miss Oakley and wait there. Who shall I say sent me? Say a stranger who put his mark there. Well, if you just say Mark, she'll understand. Mark? Yes, Mark. This barber was recommended to me as one who would give you the closest shave. That's true, Father. Not only the closest shave, I promise to polish you off quicker than any other barber in London. You take a chair, sir. Thank you. No, no, not there, sir. The light is better here. Just as you say, Mr. Todd. I can see you are an enthusiast. Every man to his own trade, I say. I love my work, sir. <laughs> and you sold the lot? Aye, I did not all. Every beast as I took to market. Grand prices too. You must have made a lot of money. Over 400 guineas. The Octobias. Finished, Tobias? Yes, sir. Good. Here's a penny for you. You've been a good boy. Deserve a little rest. Go and ask Mrs. Lovett to give you one of her biggest pies. One that'll last you to St. Pancras Church and back. He's a good boy, that, sir. I think he'll go far. I hope so, I'm sure. Now, sir, if you're quite comfortable, I'll polish you off. Let me down, quick! Come on, sir. Come on, sir. I'll brush yourself. Do you all right, sir? Yes, come on. Come on, let's get out of here. Yes, sir. What do we do next? Get to the quayside quick and get the crew. Come on. Gotta get out of these things quick. What, here? My underclothes are full of holes. Not here. That's it. That's the key. Come on. Where is he? Who? You know what I mean. The farmer I've just sent down. I see no one. I believe you've helped to get him out. Why should I? That's what I want to know. You did it yesterday. You've done it again today. Not today, I swear I... Pardon, ah, you did do it yesterday. I knew it. I... What's your game? You thought if you could get rid of him, yes. safely, you could marry that girl. 
I'm not jealous. <laughs> I don't care where you go and who you marry, but you won't take my money with you. Where are you going? You need no money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was told to give you this, miss. By whom? The farmer, miss. He said you'd know him by his mark. His mark? Yes, miss. He was most particular, I should say, mark. Oh, mark. Where did you meet him? Outside where I work. This is Sweeney Todd's shop. Sweeney Todd? What was his name? He said that you'd keep me here since I shouldn't have to go back to Mr. Todd's anymore. Oh, please, miss. Don't send me back again. No, no, no. I'll keep you here. But what happened to the farmer? He went inside, miss, to get shaved. Oh, miss. Now that I'm away from Mr. Todd's, I can say it. The answer is that Mr. Todd shaves had ever come out again, as far as I can see. Quick, come along. Hey, get the crew. I'll be waiting for you. Aye, aye, sir. We've got to do it quick. You'll know he's discovered and go into hiding. Probably take my pearls with him. That's right. Think of all the murders that have been committed in that shop. That gives me the pick when I think of it. People chucking their deaths in the cellar below. I wonder if he buries them and what he does with them. He wouldn't have room to bury them all there. Well, what does he do with it? How do I know? Who are you, Fry? I was a boy before this happened. Well, that's my mistress's box. Take it off at once! Take it off! Take that off! Give it to me! How can I get my clothes back? Well, where are your clothes? On your mistress. Where's she gone? Mr. Todd. She must be mad. That's what I told her, mister. She wouldn't listen. you want? I wondered if you wanted an apprentice, sir. I've got an apprentice. Be off with you. Oh, but I've got nothing. I can pay. I only want honest, hard-working boys. And I usually get them from the people. But you look fairly honest. <laughs> Perhaps you'd better come inside. <laughs> You've been here to see me before? No, sir. Strange. You must be thinking of somebody else. Where's the guinea? What shall I do first, sir? Sweep up the floor. Give me that. Give me that.
Yes. Is it my imagination or, or do you smell cooking? Yes, sir, it's probably the cooked meat shop next door. Now I'll just put a little cleaner edge on the razor. Or if you'll excuse me saying it, sir, you have a most beautiful throat for the razor. Beautiful. 